Okay. So as I told you, when we are taking a time study, we have to make a very detailed study of that organism. Then we have to study the external morphology and oh. also the internal organs as well as organ system. We have to study about the respiratory system, circulatory system, digestive system, reproductive system, 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 all the system of that animal we have to study. That's why we call it as a type study. And today we will start with the external features. So here you can find a picture of a rat. Almost everyone knows how we are rabbit is. Right? But then when we are taking a detailed study, many of the features that we miss in a normal sight of the rabbit uh, is very important. So that is why I have shown that rat and what the rabbit first. And we will start with the one by one. The first character is that rabbit is a gregarious animal. Gregarious means an animal that is living in groups. You can notice the natural habitat of a rabbit. Most of the time you can find a rabbit are living in groups or in colonies. That is many animals are living in groups. That is called a colony. So that is a feature of a rabbit. They are the gregarious animal or social animal, just like human beings. Or human beings naturally living in groups. Or as, a, 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 or as a population. Just like the rabbit also lives in colonies or in group and that is why they are not a gregarious and also social animal. The second point is also mentioned there is nocturnal. What is the meaning of the word nocturnal? Night living. That is they are active during night. For example, bat. Bat is active only during night. So most of the time Rabbits are active during night. There is one reason for that. Rabbit is a very shy animal. Also, it is afraid of most of the predators like a lion, tiger, or a leopard. So, rabbits are very, very fearful. That is why they, they are mostly coming out during their night time. So, that is the peculiarity of a rabbit. So in days of a rabbit, they are nocturnal animals. Nocturnal means they will be active, mostly active during the night time. Main purpose of being active at night time is for protection. Protection from enemies. So in order to get protected from the enemies, the rabbit are leaving, uh, they are spending their active time in the night. Second, there is polygamous. Poly means many. Poly means many. And gammy, gammy, or gammas means marry. Poly means gammas means marry is the meaning partner. That is the meaning. In the history of a rabbit, male rabbit usually have a male female as partner. So that is one reason why we call it as a poly gammy. Marry male partner. That is the meaning of the term. That is one nature of the uh, rabbit, uh, rabbit social behavior. One very strong many maybe keeping or having many babies. Because in the, in the most of the time an animal or male which unrolls the territory, a very good territory usually having more uh, more uh, more number of females. So that is a natural tendency. Another point is the parental pair. Why parental care means so our parents are taking care of us. So that that kind of phenomenon is known as a parental care. But if we go to many lower animals, we cannot see very strict form of parental care. So something you know, but in the most of the mammal, to a limited extent, parental care is highly developed. So in the case of a the rabbit also it is a mammal. In most of the mammals, Parental care is highly developed. So that is one reason why parental care is a important feature. Then the point of the body structure. We can find three main regions for the body. Their head, trunk and tail. If you look at the picture you can see that. In the use of a rabbit we can find a head portion in the. Then there is a neck. 
neck is another important then uh, second portion is a trunk this is the trunk this portion is known by the name the trunk and there is a very small tail so these are the three divisions of the body so the body is divided into a head region and the trunk region and the, as well as the uh, tail region now if we look at that there is a between trunk and the head there is a neck also very short neck is also there so that is also another the purpose of the neck is that it is because of the neck we are able to move or rotate our head in the absence of neck we won't be able to move our head so that is the purpose of the neck a rabbit is having a very short neck then another important feature of the rabbit is that their body is covered with the hair so when we are discussing about the general characters of mammals i have told you that mammals is having the body of a mammal are usually covered with the hair the presence of bony hair is an important feature of the man so in the case of rabbit also it is a mammal and its body is covered with the hair and purpose of this hair there are different purpose in the case of rabbit sometimes the body hair is mainly a protection from cold that can be one function so here in the case of rabbit if you look at that that hairs are colored also and that colored the coloring of the hair is almost similar to the coloring of its background so it is for a it is a protective coloration so that the predator like a leopard or tiger they may not be able to notice or find out that a rabbit that is sitting or that is living among grass or among the small bushes there is another function for concealment concealment to hide from enemy that 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 is another function of the body hair concealment to be uh, to be hidden from enemy that is the meaning of the word concealment so that is the function of body hair then upper lip with a transverse cleft if we look at that this is the upper lip now at the middle of the upper lip there is an opening and that is a uh, that is a here you can see that the upper lip is having a small gap in our case there is no such a gap in some time due to certain genetic disease or cleft palate in some people you can see that their upper lip may be uh, may be having a gap so similar to that rabbit is also having a gap called the um, gap on the upper lip and through that gap the very large incisor teeth the front teeth of the rabbit is shown by the incisor teeth the incisor teeth in the rabbit is highly developed and purpose of the incisor teeth is mainly to gnaw gnaw means parent of the rabbit to gnaw as well as uh, to bite the grass so the incisor teeth in the case of the rabbit is very strong and uh, this incisor teeth is usually projecting out through this gap in the upper lip so presence of presence of a gap in the upper lip is a characteristic feature of most of the rabbits now we will see few more points here you can find that this is a rabbit paw in many parts of the world sometimes people are uh, really rabbit the last uh, two years back there was one student who was uh, really rabbit So rabbit is a uh, uh, in these days of many people are uh, rearing this uh, rabbit. So there are different varieties of rabbit: black, white, grey, etc. Then we will see this is the natural habitat of the rabbit. So in this is not a forest region, not really forest. This is how the natural home or natural habitat of the rabbit. They are mostly living in forest. Burrows like this, neither made by them or natural burrows. So this is a natural habitat of a rabbit, and uh, rabbit is about 40 centimeter in length from mouth to anus, or from the front end to uh, posterior end. And weight of a rabbit is usually up to two kilograms. So that one forty centimeter means around more than one feet. So that will be the length of a rabbit. 
and its body temperature is also constant uh, that be a 0.8 degree centigrade for example this human body is only 37 so if we die, take your average in our hand we find that it, uh, it is more warmer its body temperature is slightly higher 1 degree higher so that is a peculiarity of a rabbit in European wild rabbit or I told I was uniqueness is dusty brown above but ventral and lower part of the male remains white. Here you can see that this is the European male, most probably the European rabbit. Upper surface is dusty. Dusty means the similar to the color of a dust the soil. Dusty brown. This upper surface is dusty brown. And the lower surface or the under surface is having a color, I is having mostly white in color. And as also the tail is also white in color. You can see here this tail portion. This is a European rabbit. So tail, underside of the abdomen and underside of the body are white in color. Whereas upper surface is mostly brown or dusty brown. That is regarding the color of the rabbit. Then uh, next point is that coloration in domestic varieties of rabbit. So regarding the scientific name of you. Rabbit is known as a Oritolagus cuniculus. So, Oritolagus cuniculus is the scientific name of the European rabbit. Now, the coloration of domestic rabbit varieties of rabbit vary basically. It may be pure white, pure black, white with the brown or black patches. Here you can see that. So, there are different varieties. So, you can see that some rabbits are pure white. There are black rabbits are the, then black and white rabbits are the, grey rabbits are the. So here also you can find different varieties of rabbit. So the coloration of rabbit differs. Then the body which consists of head, trunk, neck, trunk and tail. These are the four different regions of the body. Then trunk is further divisible into thorax and abdomen. Here you can see that this is the trunk. This portion is the trunk. This is the trunk. This front portion is known as a thorax. And the back portion or posterior portion is constituting the abdomen. So the trunk or main, for example, in this human body also, the body is divided, can be divided into the thorax and lower abdomen. Similar to that, the trunk of a rabbit, the main part of the body, can be divided into a thoracic region as well as an abdominal region. So that is another feature of the body. So trunk is divisible into thorax and abdomen. Then regarding this here you can find different varieties of rabbit. Black rabbit are the uh, uh, rabbits are red, uh, uh, pure white are the brown are the. So because rabbits are looking very cute, human beings are have a natural tendency to rear them as domestic as an animal, the pet animal. Here you can see that the big uh, upper leaf of a lamb. See, this is the upper leaf. And in the upper leaf, these are the insisted teeth. The insisted teeth in the rabbit is very strong, very powerful also, and they keep flowing. Not as in the intermediate human being. But in the case of human beings, we, our growth of our teeth will be uh, limited after a certain period of age. But that is not the case. In the case of a rabbit, their, their incisor teeth continuously grows. So that is one feature. And it's very strong and also very powerful also. So that is the feature of... So head is large, produced into a large pointed uh, blunt snout or muscle. Here you can see that just like as in the use of any rabbit, the head region. This is the head region is slightly pointed as in the use of a dog or a cat. Okay, the head region is slightly pointed into a uh, portion called the snout, otherwise known by the muscle. That is the front portion of head. The snout has a terminal transverse slit like mouth which is surrounded by two soft, fleshy, movable uh, lips. Here you can see that this is the uh, snout region. The front region of the snout consisting of lips is having a gap 
and through that gap we are finding the incisor teeth. So that is now has a transverse, transverse slit like, slit means a gap, gap like mouth which is surrounded by two fleshy and these are the lips, the lips are here, this is, these are the lips. So lips are broken at the upper side. Then the upper lip is divided into me in the middle into right and left halves due to vertical cleft extending up to nostril. Here you can see that this is the gap and this gap is uh, moving up to the region of nose. So this is the nose or nostril. So you can see that till the region of nose, the up the, this gap in the upper lip can be can be present. So that is the peculiarity of a rabbit, so upper lip is having a gap or a slit that is moving up to the region of the nose tip or nose. Next point is that the, such a divided up lip is known as hair lip. So hair is another term for rabbit, H-A-R-E, hair. Some, some species of rabbit are known as hair. For example, the rabbit that we are finding in the forest of Kerala, they are scientifically known by the hair. Rabbits, the third rabbit is normally given to the European variety. So, uh, so the this kind of lip, this kind of lip with a, uh, a gap in the middle or a slit in the middle is known as a hair lip. Simply means a lip of a rabbit. So these are known as hair lip due to which upper front incisors are exposed. Here you can see that. This is the front incisor teeth and then this kind of lip is known, known by the name hair lip. So now that is a, an important peculiarity of all rabbit. And just above the mouth are two oblique slit like opening that is a nostril. This is a nostril and the, uh, these openings are known by the name nostril. So openings of the nose are known by the name nostril. Then nostrils are surrounded by bare moist skin, the rhinarium, and lead into nasal or olfactory chamber. Here you can see this at the region of nostril. There is a few examine the nose of your dog. You can see that at the front region of the nose. There is a wet region, moist region. That is uh, similar to that. In the here also there is a moist or a wet region, highly sensitive to the sensation of uh, smell molecules, and that region is known by the name rhinarium. Here you can say this is the rhinarium, and you can also see a rhinarium in a dog, but it is more developed in the use of a dog, and that is that is usually wet or moist in nature. And uh, because of the rhinarium, they are very sensitive to the uh, sensation of smell. They are very good in, in, in dictating the smell. So that is the so nostrils are surrounded by air. By air means not free of air. That's the meaning of the word by air. Moist skin. And that part is known as the rhinarium. And rhinarium is leading into olfactory or nasal chamber. Nasal chamber means cavity inside the nose. This cavity inside the nose is known by the name nasal chamber or otherwise known by the name olfactory chamber. These are the two terms. So this is some more, some more points regarding the structure of the mouth. Next year also you can find a similar picture. The neck of the rabbit is short and flexible. As I earlier shown, I think I have earlier shown it that if you look at the neck of a rabbit, at the neck of the rabbit is very short, but at the same time it is flexible also. That means the rabbit is capable of slightly rotating itself, not full. A slight rotation of the neck, head region is possible because of the neck. So presence of a neck is a very useful structure, useful organ, uh, uh, useful part in the use of a mammal. Its uh, short neck is advantageous in its burrowing and fast running habit. So why rabbit is having a shorter neck? Because these rabbits are mostly living in burrows. So if, uh, if, the, if the neck is very long, if you take a rat or a mouse, most of the animals which are living in 
eyelashes so this is the so a small white colored is uh, upper uh, pair of eyes are the having movable upper eyelid as well as a lower eyelid and an edge of the eyelid are provided with the small hairs known by the name eyelashes a small white colored third eyelid the nictitating membrane is also present in the inner core inner anterior corner of the eye in human beings also we have that for example if we look at this end or this end of the eye there is a very small projection very small gland like projection that is actually the third eye uh, and the, now it is known by the name a nictitating uh, the nictitating membrane but in animals which are living in uh, water this nictitating membrane is giving a cover to the eye so their purpose is to protect the eye but in the human beings as well as most of the mammals which are living in on a land this uh, nictitating membrane is useless so it is highly reduced and yet now we can see only a small portion or small rem remnant of that you see that is not by nictitating membrane and that is also present in the use of a rabbit a pair of large movable trumpet trumpet shaped external ear or pinna are present here you can find this is the this is the ear so this is the very large ear here also you can find see the ear lobes are very large or trumpet shaped trumpet is an musical or, or uh, uh, instrument Similar to that, they have a very large ear, and purpose of this very large external ear or pinna, yeah, you might have also noticed that the dogs are also provided with very large ear lobes or pinna. Their purpose is to collect sound. So, larger the pinna, larger is the, the ear will be able to be able to collect sound. So, because of larger ear lobes or larger pinna. Simply a larger ear. A rabbit is very much sensitive to the sound. Any even even sound which are not which we human beings are incapable of detecting, a rabbit is highly capable of uh, sensing. So that is the purpose of very large ear. Their purpose is to detect very deep or very deep sound also. Because a rabbit, as I told you, it is a a fear, fear um, uh, it's an animal which is mostly afraid of predators they are very scared of predators so that is why they have their only protection is faster running from enemies so faster it is dictating the presence of a uh, presence of a tiger or a leopard for a better its chance of escape so that is the nature that is the uh, next feature then both pinna remain upright when rabbit is on alert laid back on frightening and running so when a rabbit here you can if you can see that when a rabbit is alert that means it is very very it is uh, listening or it is uh, 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 sensing something this hair this ear lobes will stand like this otherwise you might have noticed in dogs also something when a dog is hearing for something very 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 strongly its ear lobes will be pointed or standing like but when it is sleeping its ear lobes will fall down so that is the that similar kind of nature is also present in the case of rabbit a very strong very uh, standing ear lobe means rabbit is listening something very actively so that is the next point regarding so both pinna remain upright when rabbit is on alert and laid back on frightening when running so here also you can see that the upper eyes are here and there is a uh, here you can see that there is a uh, nictitating membrane here then a pair of hairless depression is found on each side of anus called the perineal pouch and the, for, for example and the perineal glands this is, for example in the anal region you know what is an anus at the around the anus or anal region, there is a, a region of na naked skin or bare skin, and that region is also glandular. Means they are provided with a type of gland known by the name perineal gland, and this perineal gland are smell. Protein.
producing plants or they are producing something parallel. So whenever ambient is living in their burrow, most of the time that burrow or that place will be having the smell of that rabbit. And this smell is actually produced by this perennial plant situated around the areas. And that is known as the perennial plants. So the purpose is to mark its territory. So each rabbit will be having its own body smell. And that body smell is mainly produced by this pheromone, which are produced by perennial plant. Then urinogenital opening is situated at the tip of the penis in male or urinogenital aperture or vulva in the east. Of that is a normal structure that is as in the east of human beings. The, uh, the urinary opening as well as the reproductive opening is at the tip of the male penis or in the, and in the east of female that is the uh, urinogenital aperture or vulva. Then the trunk going to trunk, it has two pair of pendadactyl limbs. Pendadactyl means five pair of limbs, five pair of uh, digits are present. That as in the age of women. So a hand or leg with the five fingers or toes is known by the name penda. Penda means five, dactyl means finger. So five fingered limbs are present. The four limbs are short and are held rigid to take shock at the end of a leaf. Here you can see that the four limbs, the front legs are known as the four limbs. They are shorter and what is the purpose of that? Here you can see that if you look at the rabbit, their front legs are very short. See, the this is the front leg and this is the hind legs. So if you look at that, the hind legs are longer and more powerful. Whereas front legs are shorter. So most of the time rabbit is jumping in the head of his hind leg. And when it is uh, jumping on the road, on a, on a ground, the purpose of the front legs is to absorb the shock. So when it is jumping from one point to another point, it is again landing on the ground. And during that landing process, the, it, the, its body has to absorb the shock of landing. And that is the purpose of the front legs. So front legs are not very much useful uh, in, uh, in running. But most of the running is actually done by jumping with the help of the hind legs. So front leg is the purpose of the front leg is to absorb the shock during the locomotion. Then the, the four limbs are shorter and held rigid to take shock at the end of a leap. Leap means jumping. The leaping means jumping. So when a rabbit is jumping or leaping, the purpose of the front legs is to take the shock or absorb the shock. Each forelimb has a proximal upper arm or a brachium. That is just like your human, uh, human uh, uh, hand. There is an upper arm and a lower arm and there is a hand. That is why. So each forelimbs are provided with the upper arm which we call as a brachium. A middle forearm called antibrachium and distal hand. Here we in this human being we call upper arm, lower arm and hand. In this of a rabbit we call it as a brachium, antibrachium and the manus. That is how it. Then with the wrist, the wrist is this region where we are putting the what or carpus. Then comes the metacarpus. In this region we have certain bones called metacarpals followed by fingers. And similar structure is also present in the case of a rabbit also. And at the end of the finger, a rabbit is provided with the claws, very strong, carved, pointed, uh, the uh, nails are known by the name claws. And the purpose of the forelimb is that they are also used in digging. So uh, earlier I told you that a rabbit is uh, living in burrows and uh, in order to make burrows, they are using their uh, forelimb and for the purpose, that is one purpose of the forelimb. Another purpose is to absorb the shock during a leaping. The palm is hairy. In the case of human being, our palm is free of hair. But that is not the case in the rat. Their palm is hairy. So that is another characteristic difference that we can find in this. So the palm is hairy. Here you can see that the rabbit is uh, feeding on. And here you can see the, the very, very alert ear. Only when the rabbit is very alert, its ear lobes are standing like that. Otherwise, it will be falling down. 
the hind hind limbs are longer and more powerful than forelimbs. That is another character already I have discussed. Now the regarding the structure of the hind limb, it has a proximal thigh, middle stand, and distal foot. That is the thigh, then a lower leg. Uh, uh, the, the thigh. This is the upper leg is known as the thigh, and the lower leg is known as a stand or thrust, and the distal foot or thrust. And uh, there is an angle also here, and the fingers uh, at the hind limbs are known by the metatarsal, and uh, followed by digits. So similar to the structure of the uh, forelimb. Then hallux or first toe is absent. That is, via our body is provided, our leg is provided five five toes, five fingers are there, or five digits are there. Or the but in this of a rabbit. There is no first toe. The big toe is absent. Only four toe, four fingers, uh, four digits are present in that. And hind limb is the main locomotory organ, and the sole is also hairy. So that is another character. For for example, we are using our palm as well as the lower side of our feet for the sole. Both are free of hair, but that is not the case of the rabbit. That both regions are hairy. A short bushy tail is found at the hind end of the trunk, and the rabbit is also having a very short tail. Here you can find that very short tail is present. The lower surface of rabbit has a white hairy patch in the wild rabbit, which is used for warning signal to other rabbits when a danger approaches. For example, at the lower side of the rabbit, there is a white white color is there. When some danger, for example, presence of a uh, tiger or presence of a, an uh, enemy or a predator is there, rabbit usually exposes its upper this uh, white color at the at the at the at the lower side of the body. That gives us a warning to other rabbit, other members of the colony that some danger is there. We should all immediately escape. So that is the purpose of this uh, this warning coloration, warning signals. Or a white hairy patch which is present in the lower side of the rabbit. Here, of course, this is a European uh, rabbit, or Ichthyolagus cuniculus, and this is the skeleton of a rabbit. You know, in our museum also we have a skeleton. So uh, this is the regarding the body structure of the rabbit. In next class, we will be going to the uh, 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 different structure of the skin and other internal organs. And today we will be stopping here.